Hi, I'm Steve Stein. Welcome to my pre-calculus course. This is the first lesson in our first unit on conic sections. Conic sections are mathematical objects that could be represented in different ways. Firstly, conic sections can be thought of as the curves that result from cones being cut by planes. Different shapes occur depending on the angle with which the plane cuts the cones. Secondly, conic sections can be thought of as the curves consisting of the points x, y that make the equation ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero true. The values of a, b, c, d, and f may differ, but the resulting object will always be a conic section. Another way of saying this is that a conic section is an algebraic equation consisting of two variables where each variable is allowed to be squared or to the first power, and you're allowed to have an xy term as well. Thirdly, a conic section can be thought of as a curve in which every point has a particular relationship to special points called focal points and a particular line called the directrix. And in this case, a parabola is formed. For example, a parabola is the set of all points equidistant from a focal point and a directrix. So every point on that curve has the same distance from a focal point and a line. And different conic section types have different definitions that relate focal points and uh, a directrix. We have to get better acquainted with conic sections, so here are some questions that I want you to explore. You can take as much time as you need, but I recommend that you experiment until you have some good observations that you can express in clear, simple language. Here are the questions. Number one, on Desmos, enter the general conic section equation ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero. And we removed the bxy term, the xy term. Add sliders for A, C, D, E, and F. You can find a link that'll make this easier for you in the description. Experiment and try to find as many unique types of curves as possible. How might the values of A, C, D, E, and F relate to the type of conic section that appears? Question two. Now enter the full equation with the BXY term, that is AX squared plus BXY plus CY squared plus DX plus EY plus F equals zero. You leave A, C, D, E, and F the same and only change B and see what happens. Three, on the conic section explorer, link in description, try to generate as many different kinds of conic sections as you can, and how does the slope of the plane, the steepness of the plane M, relate to the conic section generated? Please pause the video now and try to answer the questions. Did you try them? Here is the review. So before we talk about the individual questions, you should have noticed that there are three basic shapes that come up repeatedly throughout the course of these explorations. The ellipse, of which the circle is a special case, and an ellipse can basically be thought of as a stretched circle, a parabola, and a hyperbola. And a question for later is, what's the difference between a hyperbola and a parabola? Can't we just say that a hyperbola consists of two parabolas? And the answer is no. But for now, we won't go more deeply into this question. Um, question one, what does this equation look like for different values? Well, there's a whole lot of different results, and we're going to go through them one by one. Uh, this page is here for, so that you see all of them at the same time. If A and C are equal and have the same sign, uh, a circle is formed, if anything appears at all. And for certain values, nothing will appear at all. We'll discuss that a little bit more in a second. If A and C are not equal, an ellipse is formed, and it's more and more stretched out as A becomes further away from C or vice versa, as you can see in this animation. If A has the opposite sign of C, a hyperbola is formed, and this always appears except for one magic moment when the hyperbolas kiss, so to speak. And now this whole thing is one hyperbola, and so I'm abusing language a little bit when I say the hyperbolas kiss, but there's a kind of moment where it transitions from what's called a horizontal hyperbola to a vertical hyperbola. And in that exact moment, it actually is two lines, that magic moment where the branches kiss and for a moment they become linear. And again, when you explore math, all sorts of questions pop up, like when exactly does this occur? And we'll discuss this in more detail another time. If either A or C, but not both are zero, a parabola is formed. So again, this animation shows what happens when only C is zero and you get what's known as a vertical um, parabola. And if it, A was zero and C was uh, varying, then you'd have a horizontal parabola. 
And when is no shape formed at all? We can view this in other ways, but uh, the key determinant is whether f is extreme enough in a certain direction and whether a and c have the same sign. So at a certain point, if f gets big enough, then uh, the circle or ellipse gets small and, and nothing else appears. Here, once again, is the slide containing all of these results. And again, yours may have differed. And if you found other things, that's great. If you looked at these in different ways, that's also great. And in future lessons, we will develop ways of making sense of these results. Question two, what does the xy term do in the conic section equation above? And although we have to be vague for now, it seems to affect the type of conic section, but also to rotate it. And we won't get back to this for a while, but for now, just make a note that it seems to have something to do with rotation. And we'll have to develop a lot of theory before we can exactly explain how, but it seems to have something to do with rotation. Question three, how do you form different conic sections with a plane and a cone or two cones? Uh, so it really all depends on the steepness of the plane. If the plane is flat, a circle is formed. If the plane is less steep than the cone, then an ellipse is formed. If the steepness of the cone and the plane are exactly the same, then a parabola is formed. So at that single moment, a parabola is formed. And if the plane is steeper than the cone, then a hyperbola is formed. And the plane has to go through both of the cones, forming the two branches of the hyperbola. So the conic sections are the ellipse, hyperbola, and parabola. They can be interpreted and represented in many ways, including some that we didn't even discuss. For example, orbits with a center of mass at a given point are conic sections. So if you think of a planet going around a sun, that's an ellipse. If you think of a comet coming from space, bending around the sun, and then going back into space, that's one branch of a hyperbola. And in future lessons, we're going to discuss how these different perspectives can be connected and understood. So we have a lot of different perspectives uh, that are very different from one another. We have to understand how they're all true at the same time and how we can flexibly go from one of these perspectives to another. Until next time, have a great day.